among the many dark corners of the Playtime Co. ruins, there were some that stuck out. Places such as Playcare, where horrifying experiments had been done on helpless children, to the biological horrors that had emerged from the laboratories. Some places, however, only became a nightmare after the facility was forced to shut down due to the flood of vicious, bigger bodies. Those were mostly the surface facilities and office sections. One of these grotesque mutations of its former self was the stage area. A grand theatre hall designed after the interior of the Australian Opera House in Sydney. It had become incredibly dangerous. Filled with traps and corpses, bloody toy shells hanging from the ceilings, splatters, dust and bones. Yes, this place indeed had turned into a nightmare. And on one of Catnap's excursions out of play care, in the search for food for himself and his little ones, he had accidentally walked the train tunnels leading to it, attracted by the smell of fresh blood. But, at least inside the surprisingly tiny train station, there was nothing to be found. Aside from the strange feeling, he had got from the lack of debris. Sure, it was caked in viscera, but there was no damage to the tunnel's integrity, as well as no broken or damaged furniture or benches. It was too clean. <laughs> well... This promised to be fun to explore, at least. It would be a change from his daily routine. Slowly, he placed his large paw on the door, pressing it to open it, but immediately the cat jolted back. He had heard a click, and not a moment too soon, as a split second later, thick rusty nails pierced through the door, accompanied by a loud rums. Someone, something had set up an intricate hammer-style trap that would swing down the moment the door was opened. Now he knew someone was here. Now he knew there was food. Catnap, after entering the theater's entrance, found himself in a rather peculiar hallway. The ceiling was heavily damaged, like something heavy tried moving over the ceiling tiles. The walls were covered in bloody handprints, and the floors were covered with broken glass. Thankfully, the plush on his paws was thick enough to not get cut. But still, this was quite the dangerous hallway. And a bigger body's toy, the likes of a Huggy Wuggy, whose plush was thinner, would definitely be damaged by the glass. Broken light fixtures uselessly hung from the destroyed ceiling. The hallway only illuminated by the open door at its opposite end. Probably to hide the glass. Curiously, Catnap poked his head through the opening. The cat toy entered a theater lobby, like from a cinema. The place was wrecked. Dead toy shells and broken furniture built a gruesome reminder of past, last stand type of battle. It seemed anything edible, however, had already been picked clean. Curiously, Catnip approached a popcorn machine. Still had a few unpopped corns, and his breath hitched. Perhaps there was more hidden somewhere here. More popcorn. Cadna pushed his tongue through his hidden mouth, just below his speaker. The thought of delicious popping corn made him salivate. 
Carefully, the oversized cat monstrosity snuck through over and under the debris. The normal humans seem to have fought tooth and nail here. And that's when he suddenly heard a noise. Quite muffled. A voice. His ears twitch with delight. Voices could be two things. A broken recorder or food. Quietly he approached the double door which led to the main theater room. Pressing his ears against the cold metal door. Yes, yes, he could hear a singular female voice. Hmm. Not having forgotten the trap of the train station, he quietly and methodically opened the door. And his eyes widened. It wasn't rigged. Foolish. Slowly, Katna pushed his head into the theater. And he breathed. Impressed. The place looked like someone hired Jeffrey Dahmer as an interior decorator. Toys from top to bottom, broken, destroyed, and bloody. The smell overwhelming of rot, mold, and burnt flesh. Admittedly, himself did some decorating with toy carcasses to create a statue of his master, the prototype. Though this seemed more born out of sadism, if anything. The floor was sticky as Katna proceeded down the aisles of seats. Mesmerized. As all he had eyes for was the scene on the stage. There stood a large dining table with ten seats, eight on the sides and one on each at top and the bottom. There were people sitting at the table, or, well, on first glance it were people. And on a large, big red chair like a throne sat a bigger body's toy, a doll, an Alice Paris doll. Once she might have been beautiful. Her blonde hair had become dirty and sticky from blood. I was almost glued to her back because of that. A black bow decorated her head, giving her the appearance of fake bunny ears. She wore a blue maid dress that was tattered and dirty. Alice was holding up a tea can as she was singing a song about her unbirthday. But as she sung, Catnip couldn't help but notice the strangeness of her face. It was like porcelain, cracked, broken, held together by the bow of all things, barely even so. He could see bloody muscles and flesh poke through the cracks. She must be an unimaginable pain, he thought. The corpses that lined the table seemed to be other Alice Paris dolls, each one of them having their heads severely broken and its insides completely devoured now, appearing more like unclean broken mannequins, their expressions forever changed into that of pure agony and fear. But what was on the table? Catnap tilted his head. It was the half-devout, no, utterly destroyed body of Bobby Bearhug. <laughs> Catnap laughed. He couldn't restrain himself. He needed to laugh so desperately. Bobby had escaped his grasp after the hour of joy, and he was overwhelmed with a feeling of absolute pleasure seeing the corpse on a dinner table. But as he laughed, the singing almost instantly stopped. And that's when your eyes met catnaps. Your mouth was half open. Your hand still raised with your tea kettle, your bloodshot eye twitching as you blinked. 
and you grinned. Placing the kettle, you tilted your head, slowly facing the cat. A guest has arrived! Quick, Anna, get another table chair. You jumped off the table, crawling on all fours towards one of the dead dolls, your fingers sliding around her mouth as you moved her lips for her. Oh, the Cheshire cat has come out to play! Jumping under the table, you emerged behind another doll. He smiled so bright at the light of my life. You returned to your seat quickly, jumping atop the cushion, your body rocking back and forth as you stood. You mused. Oh, dear, dear cat. You used to be much more... Muchier, you've lost your muchness. You laughed. Catnap tilted his head. I see you have gone completely mad, muttered the cat. Almost losing your balance, you took a step forward on the table, pulled up your dress a little, and tiptoed forward until you stepped onto the corpse of Bobby. And with complete and utter bewilderment, you shouted back. I have gone mad? You were offended. I am afraid so, little Alice. You're entirely bonkers. <laughs> but ams to the best of us. Catnap snickered. He found this entertaining. But I do apologize for interrupting. Your little birthday party. You made a twirl on the bloody corpse before leaning forward to mouth another dead doll's words. Birthday, my dear cat! This is not a birthday party! Smirking, you jumped up, placing a finger on your chin. Of course it is not! This is an unbirthday party! Catnap lowered his front legs to bow in apology. Oh, my mistake, dear Alice. Catnap used every opportunity you got to take more steps forward. Every time you blinked, every time you turned around, every second your attention was anywhere but him. So by now he had reached the front of the stage. The cat could not decide. Partake in the feast of Bobby or kill you and bring it to his children. Oh, where are my manners? You suddenly shouted. You made a cartwheel to the end of the table. There needs to be tea and food and bread and games. You suddenly stopped moving, and your head creaked as your gaze shifted to the cat. Oh, dear cat. Please sit with us. Considering the state the theater was in, there was a very high chance that this exchange was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Regardless of that, Catnap climbed on stage. Kicking away the empty chair, he sat down on the floor. His paws patiently placed on the table as he watched you take a bone saw, beginning to saw the arm of the dead Bobby Bearhug. He said, tilting at the side of your cyan blue underwear. The noise of crushed bone and tang flesh filled the theater until your head turned 180 degrees. Your cracked lips turning into a smile before you threw a chunk of bloody meat at the cat. Tiptoeing back to your own chair, you sat down. Placing a hand on your chin, you watched the cat eat, devouring the meat you so graciously had offered him. As you sat there, your face hidden by a veil of your blood-dripping hair, you stared, unblinking. The cat's table manners were neat and tidy. The food didn't splatter. The food remained on his plate. Your brain even conjured up the image of him using the correct silverware despite the impossibility due to his thick cat paws, and the fact that no silverware was in fact present. 
but you enjoyed watching him eat. The noise of his teeth tearing through the food and his pleased, hungry cat-like grunts. That was at least until you interrupted the almost silence. And my dear cat... He looked at you. May I inquire about your own birthday? Is it today? Cat never had forgotten long ago when his real birthday was. So he just said... No. It was more a guess. But this just caused you to jump up excitedly on your chair once again. So this is your own birthday! Mine too! Mine too! Mine too! But... Not that one. Not hers. You pointed at an especially disfigured doll corpse. At that one. You then pointed at Bobby. And Catnip suppressed a chuckle. You must have killed him for simply guessing the wrong answer to your question. They didn't even have the courtesy of bringing presents. You then threw yourself back in your chair, making it, and you fall backwards. With a loud, chattering noise, you landed on the hard floor. Oh, yes! Presents! That's important. For every unbirthday. Presents! We need them now. On all fours, you jumped up on the table, and like a spider, as fast as lightning, you crawled forward until you were right up in Cannon's face. I've forgotten presents for you. Didn't think you'd come, but I don't have a present for you. That's not very kind, isn't it? You blinked right in his face. But it seems you don't have any either. For a moment you stared at each other. Unblinking, Catnap's heart began to race. He didn't know what to do. You've been staring at my panties, haven't you? Where did that come from? Catnap pressed his ears against the skull. How did you even know? You tilted your head. Your mouth creaked as you smiled. You want my body, right? You want to ravage me, destroy me, right? 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 He inhaled quietly. Bobby didn't have a present. But it wasn't his own birthday either. And now neither of us have a present still. You pushed your forehead against his. He felt soft. And you could feel the hairs of his fluff brush against the bloody meat that was your barely protected face. It felt like thousands of soft needles brushing against your skinless muscles. I'm just looking for food, little Alice. And we are. Your face came closer, and Catnap gave up. Uh, truth be told, he was too afraid to say no to you. Unhinged as you were. And your body followed a doll's logic. Your joints could be bent and twisted into any direction. Maximum mobility. And he was simply too big. So for once, avoiding a fight was the better option. Catnap allowed you to kiss him. Your torn lips pressed against the teeth of his mouth. Leaving behind a mix of salvia and blood. His teeth were sleek and sharp. His breath hitched as you brushed against his speaker. His heart was pounding now. A weird, hot feeling was coming from deep within him. Like a 
heated blanket had been placed on him. You breathe through your mouth. And then his forearms pushed you into him. And then his forearms pulled you into him. And Catnip allowed himself to fall on his back. You were now resting on his massive chest. Your face was decorated with a twisted grin, and he could see that your own teeth were filed down to be as sharp as possible. Like a predator. You could probably tear his flesh with these. His right eye twitched. He was... Scared? You're my plaything, my present. Your body shivered and then turned around, crawling towards his hips. Catnap shook. Your claws were touching the inner thighs of his hind legs, rubbing over the sensitive fur of his groin. Until his body shook. He felt your fingers touch something that made him shiver. Your eyes widened. Uh, the man in white changed this too. You touched it and then giggled. <laughs> it's pink. <gasps> What are you? Catnap's eyes widened. <gasps> uh, Whatever you were doing, it felt unimaginably amazing. Catnap never knew such pleasure could be possible. Especially here. It's that playtime call. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts. Especially my darling Stuarts. Husky HD 17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.